Today's video I'm going to cover replacing the front brake pads, front disc brake pads, on my 2005 or we'll say 2001 through 2007 Dodge Grand Caravan that has rear drum brakes. If you have rear disc brakes this is not the video for you. I also have a video posted of the uh, Grand Caravan that has four-wheel disc brakes. Uh, look up that video and it's very detailed. It'll tell you how to handle that. But once again, this is for if you have a Grand Caravan that has rear drum brakes, this is the video on replacing the front disc brake pads. And I'll also briefly cover uh, replacing the rotor in case your rotor's worn out. Okay, make sure your car is on jack stands. Uh, it's your choice whether you want to just jack up one side of the car at a time or do both sides at the same time. Okay, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need your new brake pads. You're going to need a compressor for the caliper piston. Though you can uh, get away with using a, a large C-clamp, but these are cheap enough on eBay. Invest in one, you won't regret it. Uh, to get the caliper off, you're going to need the 12 millimeter uh, socket kind of unusual not many 12 millimeters that I've encountered on the van if you're going to replace the uh, caliper uh, if you're going to replace the rotor you're also going to need a 12 millimeter socket as well as as well as probably going to need a big ass breaker bar to get those two bolts off that hold the bracket and you're also going to want to have a wire on hand to hang the uh, caliper once it's removed from the vehicle. Uh, don't let it just dangle or you're going to break your brake line and then you're going to have to replace that, bleed the brakes, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So have that handy when you need it. I guess you can use a couple of bungee cords but this thing is heavy and sometimes the bungee cords won't hold it too well. First step will be to remove this bolt here with your 12 millimeter. The other one is down, down there. Now they don't go all the way through. They just go through into here. This is like a uh, the bellows there. That's a slider pin that it's actually bolting to. So uh, don't expect that bolt to be real long. Okay, my two bolts are out. That's all there is. And then I simply pull pull the uh, caliper towards me and that is just to compress the piston in there a little bit just enough so I can lift this caliper out of here just like so at this point the old pads will simply slide out of here Run back that's down almost to the metal So I can show you this here. Then what I like to do is I like to put the old pads into the caliper and then put the uh, piston compressor in there. And then I will crank that to compress slowly, compress the piston. Okay, caliper is suspended. If you need to replace the rotor, let's see if I can get you a shot here. This big bolt, that big bolt down there, there are two. 21 millimeter. Uh, like I said, you're going to need breaker bar to get them off. Then this bracket will just come right out. And then the rotors, not actually attached. The lug nuts hold it in place. And then just pop the new one on, put that back on, and then you can move on to the next step. Okay, now just inspect your sliders. Make sure that they move freely. You got little shims on it, all four seats of your pads. Make sure that they're intact and not broken. And you're going to want to put some brake grease onto each one of those. Okay, and you're going to want to put brake grease onto the contact areas where it's metal to metal. For instance, where the piston hits the back of the pad as well as the front part of the caliper hits the pad. Um, also smear a little bit onto the little shims there. And they just easily slide right into place, same way they came out. Also, the 
sensor, the noise maker for when your brakes are too low, that goes on the outside pad, as far as I know. It's where I've always seen it. And then the caliper just slides over there. Push your push in your little sliders if need be, and then put the bolts back in. Okay, failed to mention. These uh, pins that the caliper rides on, there's flat sides to it, so when you put it on, make sure that the flat side matches up to the flat side on the caliper. Same's true for the bottom, but the bottom one's square, so it's almost impossible to put that one on. But you could thread this one with this in the wrong position, and you'll wind up mangling it up. Okay, now these two bolts, when you're tightening them up, don't overdo it. You snap them off inside, then you got big problems. Um, a hand, I do not remember the torque specifications. It's like 13 or 17 pounds. Uh, but if you use anything bigger than this to torque it on, you're probably going too far. And that's probably sufficient there. Uh, but if I find the actual torque specifications, I'll post them below. Yeah, and be sure to take, a, I use a wire brush attached to my drill and clean up any mating surfaces with, that mate with the, tie, with the rim. Uh, get rid of all corrosion there and I also do that to the inside mating surface on the rim also. Okay, that is it. Don't forget to remove the wire that you hung your uh, caliper by. Uh, what I will do now is I will start the engine I will slowly, very slowly, depress the brake pedal a few times to get this reseated. Then I'll move on to the other side. And uh, that is it, really. Uh, put, the, put the wheel back on and start driving. Uh, if you like my video, please like, share, um, follow, and I'll see you next time.